Hello there, it is I, the Geordie Nerd, and I am back again with the finale of Bojack Horseman Season 1. I really, really do enjoy this show. Um, one thing I like about it is it gets me talking about my mental health, and then people in the comments do the same, and I think that's great, because mental health should be something we all talk about. Um, a lot of us suffer with depression, anxiety, PTSD, and things like that, and I think it's a good place to open up with those things. Um, no judgment, you know what I mean? We'll all go through some stuff, and I love that. Uh, we'll get to discuss it, um, but no doubt we'll discuss that further in the episode. Um, link down below for the Patreon if you want to help support the channel. Um, you get full unedited reactions. Um, so yeah, and also follow me on Facebook and Twitter, just so I can keep you up to date, so you'll know if a video's coming out or not. Um, that's it. Let's just get in this now and have some fun. This is from Bojack H. Bojack is nine years old. Bojack writes, Dear Secretariat, I am a horse, just like you. I like to watch racing, and you are my favorite racer. Smart kid. <laughs> when I grow up, I want to be just like you, and I think I'm on the right track. Get it? Track? Because horses run on tracks, and you are a horse, and I am a horse. Do you get it? Do you get my joke <laughs> about the track? Okay, there's a whole page of this. Should I write him back and tell him I get it? He goes... So that's John Krasinski, isn't it? It sounds like it. Um... Yeah, Bojack has said Secretariat is his favourite horse. And I suppose even, you know, everyone has someone they really, really like. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I'm assuming he tries to emulate him. But maybe he's not as good as he says. I didn't come from such a great home. But one day I started running and that seemed to make sense. So then I just kept running. Bojack, when you get sad, you run straight ahead and and you keep running forward no matter what there are people in your life who are going to try to hold you back slow you down but you don't let them don't you stop running and don't you ever look behind you there's nothing for you behind you all that exists is what's ahead good morning i mean kind of good advice i think you know a big part of um dealing with anxiety and depression and stuff is being able to look back on your life and and things like that but i understand the metaphor of like you know just you want something to work at it um because i mean like i want to become a successful youtuber where this is my full-time job and i'm working at it uh, so i get that but again saying that kind of stuff to a nine-year-old you've got to be very very precise in the things you say and if he takes that as you know gold that's exactly what he needs to do then you get Bojack Horseman, who never looks back at his past mistakes and just keeps moving forward. Wow, what an honor. I have to thank the Hollywood Foreign Press. I feel like <laughs> I should mention that my book was not a comedy or a musical. Do you guys actually watch the movies you give awards to? Because I, I kind of get the sense that uh, also my book was not a movie. You do know that, right? Yeah, we're friends. Anyway, the response to this book has been incredible. <laughs> These last three months have been really amazing. You know, a lot of people said to me, you sure you want to publish this book? It's pretty personal. And I said, if I can make just one person out there. I was I was Mr. Peanut Butter at school when I made a new friend. I like I made it my my like life goal to just be there and impress them and and have friends. I mean, I don't think I'm friends with anyone from school now. Do you know what I mean? Like we've all moved on and done different things. But I was like, I have to be funny. I have to impress them, and and I need to feel like people like me. So I get that with Mr. Peanut Butter, definitely. Vincent Adultman, how are things at the old 9 to 5? Good. I went to the stock market today. I did a business. I keep telling him <laughs> he works too hard. Come on, Vincent. Let's get a... Oh, he did a business today. That's that's good. I can't believe that you're still dating this... Well, these children, to, to be fair. I went to stock market today, did a business. Seems legit. It's so naked and honest and revealing. It is? Uh-oh. I love the part about how you became famous so you could be constantly surrounded by distraction and wouldn't have to be alone with yourself. I thought that was a really profound observation. Oh, yeah, definitely so profound. Hey, do you want to get out of here? What? Come back to my place, maybe get a little more naked, honest, and revealing? Oh, um, no. No, thanks. What about you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was genuinely a, a touching moment. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I have a genuine fear of silence. It's like, that's when the memories creep in and stuff like that. That's when the bad thoughts 
come in and like, oh, remember when this happened? And then it's like, oh, well, let's have 12 hours of straight anxiety because of it. You want to spend three months in Sudan? Not just there. We're also going to Haiti and Thailand and Uganda and Chechnya. Can't you do all that in L.A.? I want to do something <laughs> important. I want to help people and do good work and sleep on the ground and poop in a bucket. Honey, nobody wants to poop in a bucket. Maybe I do. Maybe I want to poop in a bucket. Nobody wants to poop in a bucket. Come on. Hey, ain't you that horse that won all them races? Not today, ma'am. Today I'm just a customer who wants a warm slice of pie. Can I ask you a question? When you're out there on that there racetrack, what are you running from? You want to know the truth? Nothing. Everyone's running from something, sugar. No, I'm, I'm running from nothing. Wow, again, goosebumps and a little bit teary. Because, I mean, silence is literally nothing. And I'm scared of it. I hate it. I genuinely do not like quiet. I sleep with a head, this headphone in my ear because I don't like nothing. I don't like the thought of the shit that happened to me in my life, the stuff I've seen, the stuff that I, I, I have nightmares about still to this day because it genuinely fucks me up. You came to my wedding. Listen, the Turtle Dub Company is making a movie about Secretariat. And since you're such an expert, they want to bring you on board as a character consultant. What does that mean? Oh, it's the cushiest job in the world. You sit in a fancy chair and eat pastries all day. And then once a week you say, oh, Secretariat wouldn't do that. I don't know. I've already been offered this other thing. And did you know there are orphans in Sudan? Honey, you take this job. You can buy all the orphans you want. No, I don't buy Look, if you real Yeah, she's not Madonna. <laughs> did she buy orphans? I heard something along those lines. Doesn't mean she's a bad person, though, Paul. I got some news about Secretariat. What's up? Garfield's out. He got into some sort of accident. An All Hallows Eve store? In January? How fiendishly droll. Ah! Indubitably! Ah! Hi. Oh, bother. The clumsy bastard broke every bone in his body, and now we gotta find a new lead. <laughs> Studio wants to go young, but I was thinking we get someone a little more Bojack Horseman. Well, that's amazing. He's got the role. 50 pounds. Oh, I just couldn't be bothered, man. Food is too nice. Do you remember the last time I saw you and you asked me if I thought you were a good person deep down? Do I remember that? Yeah, vaguely. You really caught me off guard. I, I didn't know what to say. Well, do you think I'm a good person deep down? That's the thing. I don't think I believe in deep down. I kind of think all you are is just the things that you do. Well, that's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> also beautiful in a way, I suppose. For what it's worth, I think your writing does make a difference. Thanks. I really wanted you to like me, Diane. I know. <laughs> Can you make it out to Blake? Uh-huh. Thanks, man. You're like my hero. Really? That's that's nice. That's that's really nice. I wanted to hold for a little bit just in case he said anything, but yeah, that was that, that's that's nice. Wow, it was um quite a, a I don't want to say like dawa uh depressing kind of episode. I but it was he's got what he wanted, but he's still not happy, and that again it speaks to me. Because, like, I live my day from moment to moment by looking forward to the next thing. Uh, like, I wake up in the morning and go, well, I can go and have breakfast. I can go and watch an episode of Supernatural. Or, and then later on in the afternoon, I'm going to be able to play computer games. Um, or I'm going to be editing. Um, and then a video game will come out and I'll be looking forward to that. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, great video game. I get the video game and I'm, I'm expecting it to change who I am as a person. And I'm going to be less anxious and less depressed and all that shit. But it does nothing. It's like, yeah, new game. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still me, though. I'm still depressed. I still have those intrusive thoughts. I still feel like crap. I still remember the shit that happened when I was a kid. And he thought, I mean, this is what I'm getting anyway. He thought that Secretariat was going to be the best thing that's ever happened to him he's going to be a changed man he's going to get everything he wants and he's going to be happy but it just proves that 
You're not. I mean, look at Robin Williams. The guy was a comedy genius. He was fantastic. He made everybody laugh. Everybody's got a story about how brilliant he is. I love the dude a bit. And again, still, he sadly took his own life. Because no matter what, goes on in your life it's how you feel inside it's your brain it's it's the thoughts you feel do you know what i mean and that again it speaks to us loudly because he's got everything he wanted and he thinks it's going to change something and in reality it's not he's just now got that and he's still him and still dealing with the same problems he has and that's it's true of everyone. I mean, we're not all just happy all the time and all that. Well, well, there's things we think in my head, there's, there's feelings we have, and it can cause a lot of upset. And I think that's why this show is actually really great. And it makes us think. And not a lot of other shows do that. This is the only one, I would say, that makes me think a lot about these things. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. I could go on for hours and hours ranting about this. And I mean, is it really that interesting? Um, thank you very much for watching. I really enjoyed this episode. Again, like I said, it, it, a mental health side of it, it really does speak to us. I got a little bit emotional. Um, a lot of people say I'm going to cry in this. And I'm not afraid to cry. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think it's a big part of why a lot of men uh, in particular are, are secretly depressed. And no one knows is because, you know, you've got to man up and be a man and you shouldn't cry makes you look weak and stuff and i genuinely don't believe that i believe a man should be able to cry anyone should be able to cry same with women and children you know if if you've something wrong why not cry so i will be crying if that is the case <laughs> but again thank you very much for watching i'll see you all again very soon for more bojack reaction videos